Hello submarine friends. The next step of this rebuild project is to get the seat for the acrylic cylinder just perfect. So I'm waiting for good weather to sandblast this so I've started to work on this in the meantime. So what I've done, I've painted the seat with a fiberglass gel coat and then what I do is I have this perfectly flat steel block and I take wet sandpaper and I start with a rough grit and I sand it. And I sand it very carefully and evenly. And then I set the acrylic cylinder on and I measure the gap. So far, without doing any work to it, I have it within four thousandths of an inch. I want to get it closer. So this is how I do it. It can take quite a while to do this. Like the first sanding takes probably Oh, probably 45 minutes to an hour. I just take it real easy. Try and do it evenly. The first coat is really just a build-up coat. Then I get it really close with the uh, second coat. This is actually uh, pretty good to begin with, so I'll probably just need one more coat. So I'm just sanding this one here to get the big bumps off. I already know that this area right here had the gap, so this I've left thick, so this area all the way around, I'll take down a bit more than this area. It's really surprising how well this works. And the fiberglass gel coat, it has a compressive strength of something like 5,000 pounds. So it works really well for this. And I just listened to a movie in the background, so it's kind of nice. Nice relaxing work. So you can see I have the first layer of sanding done. And you can see I can just barely see through the gel coat. And I did that because that's my guide. When I can just start to see through it, then I know I've gone far enough. And I, I put more pressure on the inside edge because there's a, I think there's about a one thou tilt. So I want to get that out as well. So, so far good. Now I'm going to set the acrylic cylinder on. Okay, so you see I've got the acrylic cylinder set on here now. So what I do is I take my thinnest feeler gauge and I slip it in. And so I just keep poking it in and I work my way around until I find a spot where it does not want to go in. So right here, see, it won't go in. So I mark that spot with a pencil I learned not to use a felt pen because I can't erase it. And so here it's quite tight. It's still, okay, it's just starting to go in now. So I mark that. So that area needs to be sanded. Okay, now I remove it and I'll sand those spots. So I've got a fresh piece of paper here. Now I'm just gonna look for the marks. Spot here. I'm not going to spend a lot of time sanding it because it's not very far off. Okay, that's it. So now we put the cylinder back on after we wipe it down. The cylinder is actually fairly heavy, it's like 40 pounds. Be very careful. Give it a little turn just to make sure there's no grit because you can hear the grit. Okay, now we measure it again. So eventually we will end up with no gap anywhere. So this area in the back needs a little bit more. And right here, here's what it's sitting on right there. So right there. Now I don't just rely on this. After I get this really, really close, I go on to another step, which I'll show you. So I have this fitted pretty good. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to sand off this old paint here. I don't want to have to work on this and potentially damage this finished surface. So I want to make sure this is all sanded down so I have no risk of damaging that. 
Okay, so I finished sanding all the um, fiberglass gel coat. So now I do the accurate measurement. And the way I do that, I take cassette tape ribbons and I lay them on the seat and then I put the acrylic cylinder on top so those ribbons are now trapped between the seat and the acrylic. I'm only demonstrating here. I actually will use more when I get further along. So what I do, I'm looking for the high spot that needs to be taken down still. So when I pull on this ribbon, it's a little bit snug. It's a little bit snug. That one's loose, 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 loose. Oh, that one's a little bit snug. That one's very snug, very snug. A little bit loose, but still snuggish. Really snug. Uh, less snug and looser. So now I know that this area from here to here needs to come down. Actually, it starts, starts here. So from here to here, it needs more sanding. So eventually, each one of those ribbons will be very tight. Then it's right on the money. And of course, I'll use more ribbons so that I don't end up with a little sneaky high spot somewhere. So that's my secret weapon for getting this right on. Okay, I have it fitted. So when I pull on each one of these ribbons, there is resistance. Some of them have a little less resistance, but that's to be expected. I mean, there's no way of getting it absolutely perfectly flat. It's definitely very, very good. Plus, this is going to sit on a rubber gasket. It's an unrestrained installation, which means that this can actually float around. So the rubber gasket is contact cemented to the seat, and then there's vacuum grease or silicone grease put on this gasket, and then this sits on the gasket and can actually expand and contract. So the next step is to machine this ring which goes on top. I don't have to go through all of this with that because I can put it in the lathe, re-machine it so that it's as accurate as my lathe is, and then it gets bolted down with stay bolts. I believe there's eight of them in there, and it sandwiches this all together. Rubber gasket on the top, rubber gasket on the bottom. Okay, so I machined this top ring. I did that last night and this morning. And now I have painted this top land, which is what the hatch seals against. I painted it with uh, gel coat, fiberglass gel coat. I love that stuff. So I'll just sand it super smooth. The reason I have to do that is this ring is low budget. It's not stainless steel. So it's kind of a nuisance. You always have to keep it oiled up or it'll rust. So I just put that on, works fantastic. So uh, progress is really good. On to the next stage. Ciao.